People sometimes ask me, how do I install FreeDOS on a virtual machine? And I've done another video about how to install FreeDOS using the VirtualBox virtual machine. But actually, I sometimes use a different virtual machine system called QEMU. My standard desktop system is Linux, and VirtualBox runs great there. But QEMU is installed on every Linux box by default. So I want to show how to do that. Now, a difference in using QEMU is that everything is going to be set up on the command line. There's no default graphical interface for QEMU. If you want to do that, you need to use like GNOME boxes or some other kind of front end. But here I'm going to do everything off the command line. Now we can see that in my current directory, I've only got the FD13 live.iso file. That's the FreeDOS 1.3 uh, live installer. So I now need to have a virtual hard drive that I can use to install onto. And so to do that, I need to run a command called QEMU image. This allows me to create a virtual disk image file. I need to give the subcommand create that allow me to create a new image. And I need to say, I'm going to call it, uh, let's call it freedos.img. And then how big do I want this virtual image to be? Let's make this one sort of a reasonable size for a DOS machine that's about 100 megabytes in size. And so you can see now it's created a new virtual, virtual disk that is 100 megabytes in size. Now we can boot QEMU itself and actually uh, install FreeDOS on this new virtual disk. And so to do that, I need to run the command QEMU system i386. And that will set up a standard virtual machine that's basically 32 bits. And then I need to tell what hard drive to use. And of course, we just set up the FreeDOS.img. And we need to tell it what CD-ROM image to use. And so we do CD-ROM and then the FD13Live.ISO. Now you need to give all the different command line options to QEMU at one time. And so to specify other parameters to set up this machine, you might need to use dash M and that'll tell it how much memory to attach to this virtual machine. I'm gonna give it a standard amount of memory for a, a DOS machine of the era. We'll call it 16 megabytes. And then uh, what, what do we want to boot from? So we need to say boot uh, and then order equals D and that says to boot from the uh, CD-ROM drive. So that'll be booting from the live installer. And I also need to know what kind of window I want to display this in. So we'll say display um, and you can use different options in here. If you want to do everything in text mode, by the way, you totally can. You just use uh, display curses. On a Linux machine, this will display everything inside a terminal window. The catch is you need to make sure your terminal window is uh, at least 80 columns wide and 25 rows uh, long. Uh, otherwise, you're going to miss that, that final uh, line. So I'm going to just be safe. You can do another one called GTK. And this way, if you have the GTK library loaded, this will give you a little menu so you can control the virtual machine, zoom in, zoom out. I like to use another one, which is SDL, which is a very simple window. And I use that for recording all of my videos because that way it doesn't give me the menu uh, that I need to erase uh, later on. Now, this will boot the machine and, uh, and, and it will run, but it, it will run kind of slow because it's going to do all CPU emulation through software. So we want to use the, uh, the, the KVM that's built into modern uh, CPUs. So we're going to do uh, enable uh, KVM. And so that's going to use the kernel uh, virtual machine mode uh, in Linux. And uh, we can also uh, uh, add sound cards and things like that, but we'll do that later on. Just to install FreeDOS, we're going to use this command here, QEMU system i386. Uh, the HDA is going to be the virtual disk we created, FreeDOS.img. And then the CD-ROM image we're going to use is the FD13Live.iso, that's the installer. And then dash M16 is the 16 megabytes of memory. And then boot is going to be coming from the uh, D drive, which is the uh, CD-ROM drive. And then what kind of display are we going to use as SDL? And then the enable uh, KVM. And it's actually enable uh, hyphen KVM. Sorry about that. Uh, and so now if we hit return, this will bring up a window that allows me to install uh, FreeDOS. And so let's go ahead and just say uh, install to hard disk. And so it's going to run the installer, standard install method. I'm going to use English. 
Go ahead, continue with the installation. We do need to partition the hard drive, so go ahead and do that. And yeah, go ahead and reboot, because remember, FreeDOS, like any DOS, will read the partition table at boot time. So you need to uh, reboot the machine after you've uh, done an F disk to partition the hard drive. So we're going to go back into the installer, boot back into the installer, and select English as my language, continue with the installation, go ahead and erase and format uh, the drive C. And so now it's erased my uh, C drive. It does a little bit of setup. We'll say my keyboard is English. And let's just, for this demo, we'll just do a plain DOS system. That's pretty small. And go ahead and install FreeDOS 1.3. And so this is a, a pretty standard way to install FreeDOS. I'm not doing anything magic on this. It's basically the same as installing FreeDOS on, uh, on VirtualBox, just running it through a different kind of virtual machine. And this is what I use to do most of my FreeDOS development. Uh, notably, uh, QEMU seems to be the only virtual machine that I've tried, at least I, I use VirtualBox and I use QEMU most of the time. Uh, VirtualBox doesn't simulate a PC speaker, QEMU does. So if you need to have PC speaker output, uh, that's usually when I boot back into QEMU. And so it's installing all of my packages. And if you compare the install speed on QMU to uh, VirtualBox, you'll notice this has been a little bit slower than VirtualBox. Uh, I think VirtualBox has a little bit faster in terms of its disk I.O. And let's go ahead and reboot. And now we can uh, boot from system hard disk. So remember, we're always, we've got that, that uh, QMU uh, command line to say boot from the CD-ROM first, and that's why it's going to give us the CD-ROM menu. But I can actually select the boot from the uh, system hard disk, and there it is, I return on that. And now I've got uh, FreeDOS loaded on my system. And if I uh, shut down the system, I'll show you that I can actually uh, restart QEMU with a couple of other options if I needed to support sound, and I'll use that as my last demo on here. So let's do uh, repeat that command line. So I'll just do up arrow, and that'll bring back my command line. And I also want to be able to support uh, you know, different sound cards. And so a standard thing you need to support, so we'll add a device, and the standard soundboard from the DOS era was the Sound Blaster 16. So SB16 will select Sound Blaster 16 attached to my uh, virtual machine. Uh, we also usually want to play digital music using the AdLib add-on card. So we'll do device uh, AdLib, and that will now specify uh, AdLib attached to it as well. And to get that PC speaker emulation, we need to say Sound Hardware uh, PC uh, SPK. And so that will set up a PC speaker emulation. Uh, back here where it says boot order D, let's go all the way back there, uh, we can actually now boot from the hard drive. So we'll say boot order equals C. Otherwise, uh, everything else kind of remains the same. I just added the different sound options here. I'll just hit return. And now I've got uh, QEMU started on my system and I'm up and running. And so that's how I run uh, FreeDOS on QEMU on my Linux system. What would you think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Before I go, I wanted to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen, so thank you very much. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you again, especially here on this card. Visit our website at FreeDOS.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Mastodon. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.